Is this the future of cycling? Chainless biking. The digital drivetrain concept is straightforward. At your bicycle's crank set is an electrical generator that turns the force of your pedaling into usable electricity. Then, each of your wheels is equipped with its motor. With just a few electrical components taking care of the intricacies, the power you generate may be sent directly to the motor via two wires. Despite its futuristic appearance and ring, this idea is not novel at all. In 1975, a patent was granted to the first digital drive bicycle, and by 1995, a completely operational digital drivetrain had been shown. How will cycling develop in the coming years? Are chainless bikes good? We'll answer all of your questions in this video, but before that, please make sure you subscribe to Cycling News Live. And without wasting any more time, let's get in. The Mando Footloose was the first mass-produced bike with a digital drive when it debuted in 2012, and several other manufacturers are now developing their digital drive systems like Scheffler, Pendix, Podbike, Bike2, and more. Derailer gears and chains are common on modern bicycles. Drivetrains like these have been refined over a century and a half, proving time and again that they are effective, efficient, cheap to manufacture, and can deliver outstanding performance at low weight. Gearbox drivetrains have made great strides in recent years. They are not as lightweight or efficient as a derailleur drivetrain, but they are very low maintenance and reliable. When combined with a belt drive, the components last even longer and require less upkeep. But are the current transmissions the limit of technological advancement? Or maybe the next generation of bicycles will have electronic gear systems? The benefits of digital drive. The benefits of switching to a digital drive are numerous. The chain is the first thing to go. As a result, the drivetrain will last longer, you won't need to use as much oil, your expenses will go down, and your bike will require less upkeep. Alterations to a bike with digital drive would be limited to new brake pads and tires. This would be perfect for fleets and rental bikes, as well as for people that ride their bikes in all kinds of weather. Second, your bike will be automatic and have an unlimited number of gears. This is especially helpful for novice riders because the digital drive would ensure that you are constantly in the ideal gear. Automatic gear shifting in high-end gearbox drivetrains is currently difficult and prohibitively expensive. It is possible that a digital drive alternative could be substantially cheaper while yet providing all the same functions due to the reduced complexity of the technology. A battery or supercapacitor that can be charged in motion would be another useful addition. You can save some of your pedaling energy for later, like when you want to accelerate away from the stoplights or climb a slight incline. The battery might be charged at stoplights if you were riding a three-wheeled cargo bike. Regenerative braking allows you to recover energy as you brake or slow down using the back motor. When you store your bike, the motor can be mechanically locked and an electronic anti-lock braking system can be integrated into the motor. Your pedaling form could be optimally optimized by a computerized powertrain. By ensuring that your power output and cadence are always at their peak, the system can help you maximize your physical performance. You can also perform fascinating things with pedaling characteristics, such as electronically eliminating dead spots in the crank revolution. When the crank leverage is high, the generator resistance may be made higher, and when it is low, the resistance can be made lower. Another scenario where a change in pedaling qualities could be advantageous is if you're rehabbing from an injury or have a disability. Suppose it's your left thigh. A digital drive can be adjusted such that pedaling resistance is lower during the left leg's phase and higher during the right. There will be more freedom in bicycle style thanks to digital driving. There might be innovative foldable bike designs, unique cargo bike layouts, and groups of people each pedaling at peak efficiency on the same bike. Okay, so the benefits are sounding fairly good, but there are, of course, drawbacks as well. So for digital drives drawbacks, vehicle efficiency is a major factor. The process of converting mechanical energy to electrical energy and then back to mechanical energy is wasteful. When you power into your pedals, a single speed chain or belt drive will contribute more than 95% to driving you ahead. In comparison, a digital drivetrain will likely lose roughly 20% of the power at the generator and another 20% at the rear motor. Perhaps another 10% could be shed by employing step up and step down gears to adjust the available power. Taken as a whole, the efficiency of a belt drivetrain is roughly half that of a chain drive. With a chain drive train, you could ride at 27 kilometers per hour or about 17 miles per hour at 150 watts, but a digital drive train would only allow you to ride at 22.5 kilometers per hour on the flat. As if that weren't bad enough, add in a slope and things go downhill quickly. 
With a chain, you could reach 9.4 kilometers per hour and a 5% incline. With a digital drive, your speed would be reduced by 34% to about 6.2 kilometers per hour. But remember that these figures don't account for the energy recovered by the drivetrain while braking. A digital drive would also increase a bike's weight by at least 25%. Even the lightest rear hub motor is still over a kilogram heavier than a standard hub, and the front generator and cables add at least another. The lack of a mechanical link between the pedals and the back wheel necessitates a very robust digital drive motor. Depending on the terrain, a 2.5 to 3 kilogram motor could be suitable. No matter how well designed, rear hub motors cannot use your bike's gears to reach the high RPM range necessary for climbing steep hills or cruising along flat terrain. The digital drive can only really be optimized for one or the other, barring the usage of extremely massive and heavy motors. Combining this with the high rear motor weight, it's less appropriate for mountain bike use too. The software and controller are crucial components of a digital drive. The motor will lack the responsiveness of a chain drive train if it takes more than a few milliseconds to make adjustments. The benefits are substantial, but the drawbacks have been amassed, so let's examine the situation more closely. Bikes with a series of electric motors and hybrid drivetrains. We've just got over the benefits and drawbacks of digital drive equipped bicycles and standard bicycles. However, the discussion about the potential of digital drive e-bikes becomes much more intriguing. When a digital drive bike is used in conjunction with a battery, it's commonly known as a series hybrid pedelec. Since digital drive bikes already contain all the parts of an e-bike, Adding a battery to counteract the additional weight and transmission losses is as simple as slapping on a new sticker. The Mando Footloose is the only mass-produced bicycle with a computerized drivetrain. Because this bike is at least a decade ahead of the competition, the drivetrain is not particularly well made. The lag between the pedals and the wheel torque leads to a lot of surging, making the ride feel more like walking up a stair climber than riding a bike. The software may be a contributor to the problem. The digital drive will not seem natural if the controller only utilizes simple algorithms, limits the speed at which the motor may be controlled, or does not provide the rider with adequate feedback through the generator. The German certification body for e-bikes had until very recently classed digital drive bikes in the same category as motorbikes and mopeds, rather than as a bicycle, which is why only the Mando Footloose is currently accessible. Bicycle stores in Germany could be fined €5,000 for selling the Mando Footloose without a license. The EE Speed Bike featured a more sophisticated digital drive system that was intended for mass production but was ultimately scrapped. It is said to ride similarly to a traditional bike due to its use of sophisticated software to simulate a chain drive in conjunction with specialized control algorithms to operate the components. At its lightest, the EE Speed Bike weighs 29 kilos or about 64 pounds, has a top speed of 45 kilometers per hour and a range of 80 kilometers when assisted moderately. Scheffler may have incorporated some of the patented control electronics from this bike into their new free drive system, so it'll be interesting to watch where this technology goes from here. Is it safe to conclude that the arrival of chainless bicycles augurs well for cycling's future? And what do you think about this? If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great videos like this one. Thanks for watching.